Okay, here, bring you back another video. I want to make more um, consistent videos, like longer form, but I'm going to try and keep this as short as I can because I feel like I ramble. But I want them to be quite free flowing, so I do have sort of a structure, but I, one of the things that deters me about making long form videos is that I try and structure them too much and then feel like it's too much pressure and I'll probably still forget stuff because my brain's all over the place all the time, which you'll probably be able to pick up. Um, when you speak to me, if you speak to me in person, or if you if you watch any of my longer form content, anyway, that's why like X is pretty good for me because it shows one of my concise thoughts like at a time, but it doesn't mean I don't have multiple going on at once, which I often do. So we're going to talk about the DXY, um, and I'm going to be a bit contrarian. I'm always a bit contrarian. I think it's the best place to sit if you're an investor. It doesn't mean that's where I necessarily put all my eggs. It's just like often going against the market or, or like understanding what the, the whole are doing um, is a good way to make money obviously in short term trends or trades you sh technically you should never bet against the trade um, but in the longer term time frame like when everyone leans on one side of the fence like I always think well, well there's probably value on the other so that's what we're going to look at quickly here with the DXY uh, everyone expects that the DXY is going to continue on, it, on its march up um, and I can understand why narrative wise like we're looking at Potentially, like the weakening of the yuan, like we, I, I tweeted about this morning, um, coming out of China, there's there's like news about how much they're like accumulating different commodities, and that's what people do before, and uh, like looking at treasury, like selling off treasury or not buying treasuries, and like this. So basically, looking at like what people do before they start to weaken their own currency, and we've also talked about in the past uh, their property market. Um, and the potential, and the potent and the way that Chinese buy property is like they pay up front for properties and then it's built and then they live in it and people basically haven't got the house and they've been paying for it. and like what the government basically going to do about that because there could be a big up right, uh, upheaval in China or what's the word, uprising in China if they can't sort this issue out and I think it's convenient timing just before the Hong Kong uh, spot Bitcoin ETF and ETH ETF go live which is happening in the next few days, it's like 10 days from the day of issuance, which was like last Monday, but I don't know if it's 10 business days or just 10 days generally, so that's probably looking between the next 3 to 5 days for that to start trading. So I think we've got like a 3 to 5 day window of like still like chop basically. Um, all I can certainly say, I think obviously my, my base case is that crypto moves up in general, but let, let's go back to the DXY. I basically think we're deviating in a range, I, I got into China a little bit there, I didn't mean to, this is what I mean, my brain starts doing whatever. Um, I got into China a little bit, but I think the DXY specifically is deviating from a range right now. Technically, I don't think there's any more that you can say about that. Only sentiment will tell you other things, and looking at like geo more like wider geopolitical uncertainty and, and potential other issues there. Although I was listening to here goes my brain again. I was listening to I think his name was Joseph Wang this morning. He was talking about if Trump comes into power, the potential of um, weakening the U.S. dollar, similar to something like the Plaza Accord uh, in the 80s, basically just to uh, increase the price of exports. Um, oh, sorry, to make the ex to, to make exports cheaper from the U.S. and to, uh, to increase the cost of imports to basically try and push production back inside the U.S. again, um, which I thought was quite an interesting concept. Um, obviously, we've seen we see countries like like China do this a lot. They they weaken the yuan, um, and it means that people then uh, they're, 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 then people come to them for production because the you get more for your more bang for your book. I think is uh, the technical term, but not not specifically for that. But anyway, DXY deviating potentially. If we do see something like this happen, um, and we do start to come back within this range and down towards 100, that gives space for uh, crypto to move up. As I said, I haven't really planned this video specifically, so I'm just going to overlay what it would look like for Bitcoin on a new price scale. Let's show you what the DXY and Bitcoin do when the DXY. Starts to head up, it's normally when uh, Bitcoin starts to come down. So DXY has had this last little leg here, and for that whole time, Bitcoin's basically been consolidating. It's not completely inversely correlated, but on the whole, as you can see, uh, DXY heads up, Bitcoin starts to chop, like sort of chops. DXY starts chopping, Bitcoin starts to head up, um, and then DXY starts to break out, and Bitcoin sort of, sort of chills out and that chops again. So could that be the first thing that we're looking at for? like Bitcoin specifically, is the DXY going to cool off here? We are in the daily time frame, again in the oversold area, just as we reach the top of the range. Um, so that's another thing to watch out for. The last time we were in the overbought area, sorry, uh, for the DXY, we then reversed and came to the bottom of the range. Will we see that again? I don't know. Ranges are very difficult, very difficult to trade, notoriously. 
So what else do I want to talk about? I want to talk about Bitcoin price action. Um, and the reason I'm like here in charts because I feel like, again, my brain's bouncing about here, but let's talk about it just quickly. This is the area I feel like we are for altcoins. I feel like this structure is playing out quite similarly in a few altcoin structures right now. On the lower time frame, like the, the one to four hours, I think a lot of altcoins look different, which is kind of like weird for me as well. It makes me feel like I'm not really very certain as to where altcoins are uh, right now. I do think that looking through history, and I've talked about a lot, uh, when Bitcoin breaks its all-time high and we have a clear break, altcoins normally go parabolic. But whether that's like today, tomorrow, weeks, months, I'm not 100% sure as of right now. I'm going to show you my thoughts uh, to Bitcoin. If you don't already follow me on X, you should. Uh, if you if you like my content, I talk often often about um, liquidity pools using a program called Trading Different, which was very they 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 wanted me to trial their product and I did and uh, I liked it and we have no partnership specifically. I just like the product. And they give me free access to it. It's quite expensive, eight hundred dollars a year or something. So quite expensive for the retail retail trader, but I think it's definitely worth um, a look if you are in trading. But that this isn't anything to do with that. <laughs> Again. Let's just go back towards Bitcoin. I've just had a coffee, if you can't tell, guys. So this is what I'm like. Um, the ADHD kicking in on the ADD. Um, stimulated by caffeine. If we look at the, the fixed range volume profile, that comes in at about 67.77, I think I put on Twitter. So I was talking about this range. I've been talking about it for a few days. If we go down to the four-hour time frame, um, if we get a close above this ba this basic area here, I was looking for a push towards all time high. Could be wrong, like we could get the close above, looking for the liquidity grab here, fake that top of the range. As I said, the range is difficult, come down. I do think there is the potential for a push out here on both my recent theses, or theses, I don't know, I'm not the best English. Um, I am looking for a bit of a sweep into this range here. You see on the fixed range how we've got like, no volume in this section here. That's where are we looking to touch and what is that at, sorry, 58,000-ish. And if you look at the liquidity pools, there is liquidity there as well. Um, I do think that, again, would be something a lot of people aren't expecting, a lot of people starting to jump in along again here. Not necessarily that I've looked at the open interest on that, so I don't want to claim that factually. I just want to claim that from my timeline. People are almost expecting that right now we're going to all-time high. Then that can be confirmed for a while. Uh, I think if we break above... This area, there's a good chance, but then there's also a chance that we're just grabbing the liquidity from here, faking the high, coming down, taking the low. But again, guys, this is what I'm saying. We're in a range, and it's choppy, and it's flipping hard to trade. So you're playing a dangerous game if, you, if you're going bulls deep trading, I think, at the minute. Yeah, guys, if you haven't already checked out my weekly newsletter, go and check this out. Like I've dropped some big alpha this week. Basically, if you didn't know, it's been like conference week in Dubai. I basically said, I've just dropped alpha in here about some of the things I've talked about this week with people behind closed doors, like not behind closed doors that no one else can find that information out, but I'm very blessed to be in a position where I get to have conversations with interesting people, founders, people who are really clued in in the space, um, and I've dropped it in this, I've dropped it in this, video, in this um, weekly newsletter for free, so go and check it out, like, if you don't want to, then don't, obviously, but just a lot of alpha in here. Um, I try and share what I can. I talked about hey, who's the chart that I'm just talking about now. Um, I'm just going to quickly touch on a few of the other projects. This project specifically flies. I talked about in the newsletter. It's really on my radar screen at the minute with a tiny, tiny market gap of 4.9 million. Uh, this is actually a community-made product uh, or token on base that basically wraps and unwraps one-to-one -one, uh, X copies recent Mutatio airdrop, or not airdrop, Public Mint, which minted over a million copies. They've made it wrappable and unwrappable, basically fungible. Um, and I just think it's an interesting concept. The chart looks pretty good. I know some big players in the NFT space are trying to accumulate, so basically supplies going down and Let's see if demand picks up and see if we can get a push out of this range. But at a low market cap like this, it's super high risk. But to be absolutely honest, I bought, um, I, I minted and then I sold some at $10. And I um, don't know if it's a good decision, guys. And I'm, I'm thinking about buying back in uh, if we get a pullback to this sort of range here, the 7 to $8 range. I'm probably going to get back in because I just think that being this low of a market cap, 
and that it's kind of a new concept, like it's a good chance that something could happen here. But I'd, again, complete risk. Anything, anything with those sort of market caps are, are just madness. Uh, another one that I've kind of got wrong so far, and I didn't. Like I don't really think I don't think the token structure is good for this project, but I think the attention to the the attention to value mismatch is huge. Basically, ores like some sort of mining project on Solana, like basically proof of work project on Solana that's been launched. It was a thing that basically broke Solana. It's getting a lot of attention over on Twitter. I think they've got like twenty, like twenty four, twenty five thousand followers made by someone in the community under an alias who it's just very interesting the reason that the price is going down because the tokenomics in my opinion aren't great because basically people just mining the token for free or almost for free and then just selling it on the open market but they've paused mining or they have paused mining for the short term to try and work out a few issues let Solana like get back up onto its feet and then um, think of a way to incentivize holding of the, holding of the token before they uh, continue. I'm not affiliated with any of these projects, I just think that these two specifically are quite interesting. They're things I've definitely got my eye on. I've got a big bag of ore, and as you can see here, this grey line with my entry is 720. So I'm down big on the project, but it's nothing that I can't afford to lose. Thinking about adding again, genuinely, because the proof of work narrative is pretty big at the minute. I've seen with like tokens like Casper, obviously, on, on, on um, I don't know what I was going to say on Bitcoin. I don't even. I think Casper's is own network, but I think it was uh, accumulated by people who could mine Bitcoin in the first place that they're launching. Anyway, I'm not going to go to Casper, but Casper obviously ramped up massive. Could do something like this on Solana. People are praising it as well, or like at least talking about it in a non-negative way because it shows some flaws with Solana and how the the network can get congested by just running some hashing program. And honestly, guys, that sort of stuff. It's a little bit out of my area of expertise. I'm not a dev. Um, I, I just look at what I find interesting in crypto and in, in, in the macro sense uh, in the world as well, learning a lot about traditional finance. But yeah, again, another project that I, I find quite interesting. There's not too much more I wanted to touch on, just the uh, Bitcoin dominance is the last little thing. Let me see if I can find it. Here it is. Talked about this a few times recently. We didn't quite make my target, which was, we literally were this close uh, from the target I've been talking about for a little while. We, we were like 0.15% away, which is another thing, and another reason why I think we could potentially, potentially see like a tiny, tiny lower low be set, uh, a little bit more liquidity grabs hit into this area here um, before seeing a reversal. Like my thesis on Bitcoin over time is that it will have diminishing dominance in the market as we probably see some alts come into uh, legacy financial markets and start to change uh, the world uh, in some way. However, the last two alt seasons we've seen have both been in the touch of this like grey box here. So that would be something different this cycle if that happened and obviously the base case is never um, presume anything is going to be different basically. Basically, um, it should always run the same because humans are uh, emotional and cycles repeat, but that's my opinion there. So I'm just me. I could be wrong. So there could be maybe one last flush to 5718, but I also again could be wrong about that. This is the area of truth, I guess, um, where we are now with the Bitcoin dominance coming back, testing at previous resistance as support. If we lose this, could we again be headed towards the bottom of this range or further? Um, there's a lot of questions out there right now, like. For the short term, I am pretty um, uncertain. Doesn't mean I'm like worried particularly. I'm sitting mainly in spot. I have some cash. I'm looking where to deploy that at the minute. Um, for the longer term, I'm super bullish, guys. I really, really am. Like I don't know how you can be anything else. Mainly on alts because I just think there's a higher percentage uh, reward that you can get from them. But yeah, super bullish in general. I'm going to leave this video here because I want to touch back on things maybe tomorrow or the next day. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a share, like, comment, and please uh, subscribe to my weekly Insight newsletter. We're now on 500 um, weekly readers, which is awesome, guys. Thank you very much. Appreciate you all. And yeah, I'll see you on the next one. Peace of A Town Downs, Crypto Insight UK would say.